Just like with the fourth stage, the envelope follower will work the same, whether it's an instrument track or it's an audio track, as long as there is signal coming into it. All right, and so it's difficult to kind of route this one around, but I'm gonna show you one fun thing you could at least consider doing. Uh, we'll do that at the end, but for now, I'll just bring in the envelope follower. So it listens to the signal and then it modulates parameters based on that signal. So it works best with things like drums, things that are transients with a nice and very dynamic. And then you can kind of go in and you can shape it further. So in this example here, we have this drum loop going and maybe we have this drum loop going. And so you can see this is the envelope that's coming in and it's showing you what would be generated. So we can make something really extreme and choppy or we can kind of smooth it out. In this example, we'll do something really choppy and I'll just give you a quick example. This one's really easy to set up and use. All right, that's just the start there. And we can again adjust how this is working. And having an LFO or something control the release is not a bad way to go about this. I'll just go ahead and set that up now. And you can see we're now at a point with the modulators if you've gone through the full course where the ideas are just starting to come to you almost immediately. So we could maybe do something like this, have it go through. What I'd even probably do is go further and use a random and have that control the speed. And why don't we just go ahead and set all these things up? This is the fun of working with these guys. So we'll have this going. And what I'd actually probably do is slow it down from the beginning we'll go to 0.5 cool so now when we listen ah and of course make sure you turn off bipolar oh that's really cool give me some random Nice. <laughs> and now let's just go even further with it. What I'd also probably then do is bring this up. <laughs> That's really cool. So this one's really straightforward. And I doubt you're going to be using it in as extreme way as I'm using it here. When you have this going with other stuff, it's really cool. And one other thing that's maybe worth showing you is something that I did here on this mixture track. I used an audio receiver and I have it bringing in some of the drums. And so if we just listen to this now without this chain going, you hear we get kind of a mixture and I can set it to taste. And it's useful to have this mixture because now it's giving me something to work with, with the envelope follower that I have set up right here inside of the comb. And I've got a lot of other things going on as well. You can see I have this speed changing and that's based on this LFO in here. But what I like about this, in fact, the comb is sounding a little bit high. I'm even gonna preface it down lower. Is that I could bring in my other two parts and just use this as something in the background.
imagine taking the drums out. So this doesn't sound like really exciting or really great, but I'm just imagining in other scenarios where trying things like that might work out, you know, if you're being a little more um, intelligent about it than I am, I'm just kind of throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks, but do be aware that you can use an audio receiver and then try to bring in something that's a little bit more transient in nature, combine the two and use that as sort of uh, what you have going on with the envelope follower. All right, that's going to do it.